What up, Melvin7 here. Today I'm bringing you my Premier League predictions, the league table. I did promise it straight after the window closes and uh, it's obviously closed and the international break has finished and a lot of players that were expected to leave have uh, stayed. And uh, yeah, I'm bringing you this table prediction now. So again, it's a prediction, you know, I'm probably wrong as I always am, as most people always are with their predictions. So, you know, no need to get annoyed if your team is lower than what you think. Brilliant, that's fantastic. And, uh, you know, hopefully you're right for your team's sake. But uh, for me, this is my prediction. And anyway, well, actually, if, I, if what I said was true there, then no one would finish bottom, so you know well <laughs> regardless let's get straight into it so someone's got to start at the foot of the table and it's going to be Brighton for me um, they've done phenomenally well getting promoted uh, they've made some signings in but I don't know like obviously we've had three games to judge and that's not a, a great tell like they could go on and get a lot of points and uh, to be honest since they're new to the Premier League like when Bournemouth were I want them to stay up but I just don't see them having enough in the Premier League at the minute so I've got them at the bottom of the table. Next we've got Crystal Palace. It's not going to be soon before uh, Frank de Boer gets sacked. But by that time, um, what he's tried to implement will get muddled up with what Sam Allardyce had at the club. And whoever the new manager is has to deal with that. So uh, the spirits are going to be low. And yes, they can bounce back. Of course they can. But at the minute it is just looking like... They just can't grasp what De Boer wants them to do, which is a stark contrast to what Allardyce had them doing. So, I don't know, I, I just feel like this will be the year that they finally go down. 18th, I've went with Newcastle. Reason for that, they just haven't brought enough in. And to be honest, if they, they had a fantastic win against West Ham in their last game, 3-0. But West Ham are also struggling as well. But um, I, I just think that if by Christmas they're struggling I can see Rafa Benitez walking because he didn't get what he was promised by Mike Ashley every penny the club earns I'm sure they sold about 20 million of players after the last player that they bought and they didn't bring anyone else in uh, so well actually no the Dwight Gale thing didn't go through so I think they've made about 10 million uh, through sales but they haven't reinvested that so I just don't think they've got a strong enough team to keep them up they'll be there or thereabouts, but just under, in my opinion. Next, we've got Huddersfield. And it's not just because of the seven points that they've already acquired, which is very important. I mean, the threshold is usually 40 for going down. But I don't know, there's just something about them that reminds me of Bournemouth when they came up. And uh, it, it looks as though they're going to be a team that stays and maybe builds for the next time. Of course, they could go down. I could be completely wrong. This could be like Hull City when they started off really brightly last season, but then ended up bottom. But I don't know. They've just got something about them, a little bit of fight, a little bit of grit. Um, and yeah, I think that'll serve them well. And I think they'll finish, uh, what would it be, 17th we're up to now. Uh, next, we've got Swansea. Um, to be honest, I think their fans will probably take this as a good season, as long as they didn't go down with Gilfie Sigurdsson um, leaving. And they've had a good start to the season. One win, one draw, one loss. Um, they've looked fairly solid. The loss was against us. And up until the 1-0 mark, they, they held their own. And then just capitulated when, you know, we had our usual 75-minute to 90-minute, like, flow. I don't know what I'm going for. But basically, like, you know, we've done that at the start of the Premier League this season. We've been very good towards the last 50 minutes but yeah they've held their own and i reckon they'll stay up because of that um they've brought a couple of players in i think did they get chadley over the line um i i really should cross check my facts before i start these videos but one take whatever happens happens uh but anyway next we've got burnley i think sean dice is probably the most underrated manager in this league the fact he's kept burnley up for I don't even know, I can't remember, is it just a season or is it two seasons? Regardless, he, he is phenomenal. Honestly, what he's done with that squad, they've, they've got a championship squad. They've lost uh, Keane and they've lost Andre Gray. So, you know, I, I would have had them down if I hadn't just seen what, like, the spirit in that team. They don't have what other uh, teams have, but they've got a phenomenal manager and they've got someone who gets the best out of the players that he's got, gets far more out of the players at his disposal so I'd be surprised if they do go down it's a possibility but uh, for the minute I've got them we're up to 15th now you'll see the graphic on screen I can't so <laughs> yeah next we've got West Ham 
although they've bought well, uh, you know, I think Zabaleta was a good buy for free. Chicharito Hernandez, definitely their best buy. Uh, Anotovic is a decent buy. Joe Hart, I don't know. Uh, you know, he has the Premier League experience, but is he past it? Who knows? But, I mean, it's not just the way they've been playing. I reckon Bilic will eventually get sacked. I'm not sure who they'll bring in. Maybe Rafa Benitez will go to West Ham after that. But they just look really, really poor. And it looks like another, you know, unsuccessful year for West Ham. I don't think they'll quite get relegated. But, I mean, whether I got them 14th, I think... That honestly, I just see it being an underwhelming season. I don't think Chicharito is going to be able to carry the the run the entire season. Um, I mean, he's already scored goals, but they haven't really won any points. Like, how, let's have a look at the table. Yeah, literally, they're rock bottom at the minute. They've lost three out of three. So um, yeah, I just don't see it being a good season for West Ham. Next, we've got Bournemouth. Uh, they've bought well. And uh, also Eddie Howe, a very good manager, like Sean Dyche. He's kept Bournemouth in the Premier League for a couple of seasons now. And I, I just genuinely think uh, they, they've brought in Defoe. They've brought in a couple of other players. I think they'll do well. Um, and yeah, 13th, that will be a, another great season for Bournemouth. Uh, so not much more else to say on that one. Uh, Stoke, I've got just above them in 12th. I, I'm making sure that I'm getting this right. Wait, 28, 19th, 18th, 17th, 16th, 15th, 14th, 13th. Yeah, 12th. I just want to make sure I'm saying it right for the video's uh, sake. But yeah, Stoke, you know, Mark Hughes, he's a, he's a decent manager. Um, he has his flaws. He has his good games. Stoke are just, are just a you know, team that you always have mid-table. No matter what they do, no matter what they bring in, you always have them in or around 15th to 9th. In or around that kind of time, uh, and yeah, I just think it's going to be another one of those seasons for Stoke. Uh, <laughs> not much else to say. Next, we've got Watford. I think they've brought in some phenomenal players. That R Richard Lindson, uh, you know what I mean, the Brazilian striker. He looks great. Uh, Andre Gray. I think he'll eventually get goals. Chalaba. You know, I like this Watford team. I think they've got a lot going for them. So I think they'll finish the top of the bottom half. Uh, I think they'll finish 11th, and yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they even finish slightly higher than that. Uh, next, we've got Southampton, 10th. Another team like Stoke, where you always have them kind of mid-table. Um, yeah, I, I just think, yet again, uh, well, keeping Van Dijk is huge for them, um, but also the rest of their team, they've got a decent squad. Um, they know what they're doing, kind of, and yeah, I just think it's going to be a solid mid-table finish for uh, Southampton. Now... The next one is going to be hugely controversial, but to be honest, I probably should have put them lower than this. But I've went with Arsenal. Now, yeah, they've kept Sanchez, but you know he's going to have his mind set on a City move or somewhere else uh, in January. Obviously, he can't move in January, but he can have a pre-contract in January to move in summer. And yeah, I just think you know they've had a really, really shite start of the season. They've had a shit transfer window. Yes, they brought in two great players in Kolasinac and uh, Lacazette but they've lost so much uh, the spirit in the team seems horrendous the fans are already getting on Wenger's back it just le seems like a hostile environment and I just can't see it being a very successful season for Arsenal um, they've done terribly so far as I say narrowly beating Leicester losing to Stoke uh, getting thrashed by Liverpool and also they yet to go into Europa League and I'm telling you Europa League is a strain no matter what Wenger says oh I'm going to be playing the kids or whatever it's still a strain when you've got to uh, travel you've got to play your games you just it's just a horrible competition to be in like you look at not just us when we won it when Chelsea won it they struggled in the league when Liverpool got to the final they struggled in the league um, I keep referencing that but yeah Europa League I'm telling you man I, I just can't see Arsenal doing well this season I've got them ninth uh, next we've got Leicester in eighth I think they are showing signs of the Leicester that won the league, although there's so many more teams that are a lot better than when they won the league that year, which is why I've only got them eighth. They're looking pretty good. Uh, I know they lost Danny Drinkwater in the deadline day to Chelsea, but that um, other United youngster that they have, is it Matty James in central midfield, looks to be decent for them. Vardy scoring goals again. Uh, they're defending quite well. Harry Maguire looks like one of the signings of the season for the money. Uh, early days, of course, but he does look like a phenomenal uh, buy for them. So, yeah, I reckon 8th is a decent position for them. Next, I've got West Brom. Tony Pulis, miracle worker, you know, very boring style of uh, football, but I think they finished 8th last season. And, um, 
yeah, I think they're going to do one better than that. I like the signings that they've brought in. They've managed to keep Johnny Evans. Although I don't think he's a good buy for Man City or Liverpool or Arsenal or whoever else was going after him. Don't think Liverpool were actually. But uh, I think he's phenomenal for West Brom and it's good that they kept him. He can do a job there. And yeah, I just feel like them being a, a team that you know is close to Europa League places will just miss out. But yeah, I think they're a, a good team and a decent bet to finish there. Next, in sixth, I've got Everton. Uh, they've had a really, really good window, bar losing Lukaku, which is huge. They've made really, really good signings. They've got Ronald Koeman, who has done well for Southampton. He's starting to build a project at Everton. You can kind of see why he left Southampton for Everton. He was promised funds. He's got them. They've spent $150 million after recouping 75 from uh, Lukaku. So, <laughs> as Arsenal fans, well, Mo. Uh, from Arsenal Fan TV loves to talk about net spend. They've got a net spend of about 75 million. Um, and yeah, I, I reckon they're going to do decent. I reckon they'll get Europa League again. Uh, bar Rooney getting drunk, uh, sorry, getting done for drink driving. They've had a good start of the season, uh, and so is Rooney, to be honest. Well, I see a good start. One draw, one loss, one win. But I, I see them pushing on, and uh, yeah, I can see them finishing sixth. Next, I've got Spurs in fifth. Now, I like Spurs as a team, uh, I think they have the best XI, I've said this many times, so many people have, but uh, the bench is where they needed improvement, they've brought some reinforcements in, uh, they do look slightly stronger, but it's just that Wembley curse or whatever the hell it is, they can't play on a long pitch and that's going to hurt them, Like they've already dropped as many points as at home already in two games than they did in 19 last season, Like that's huge, they lost for the first time at home in over a year. I, I, they're just going to struggle. I know Harry Kane struggles in August, so maybe he'll come back firing. They could, of course, get into the top four, but and usually I would have them in there, but I, I don't know. I think that Wembley thing is really going to cost them points. They'll win away, but they'll struggle at home. So, yeah, I've got them fifth. Fourth, I've got Liverpool. I'm a United fan. I've got to say I've, I've been really impressed with Liverpool. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them finish slightly higher than this. just depends on what other teams do, but I've got them fourth. I do reckon they'll get top four, although they didn't get Van Dijk. Their defence is obviously their big gaping hole, um, and you know set pieces. Once they get, you know, Klopp needs to get rid of zonal marking. Regardless, like I'm glad they still have it because they're going to do, they're going to keep conceding when they do that because they just can't uh, do it efficiently. But um, yeah, like obviously their forward line, their midfield looks pretty good. They've got Kea coming next summer. You know, I, I reckon it's going to be a decent season for Liverpool fourth is where I've got them. Next, I've got Chelsea. If I'd have done this after the Burnley game, I would have probably put them around 6th, 7th. But they've looked uh, to have a lot more fight. They've brought in players, a little bit of depth. I still think overall, they've got a weaker team than they have had last season. Uh, Matic, massive, massive loss. Costa, I know he's into the Premier League squad. He's not in the Champions League squad, though. Really can't see him playing only if Morata and Batuai get injured. And then he'll be flogged off in January anyway. So losing Costa and Matic from the starting 11. Um, although Bakayoko, he's got potential. Danny Drinkwater, he's a decent player. They're not quite Matic level and Morata isn't quite Costa's level. So um, I know Morata and Costa are different players, but I, I just genuinely think that, yeah, they're, they're not as good. But they did bring in Zaba Costa, they brought in Danny Drinkwater and Deadline Day. They've got some more depth, which is what they needed, but I just don't think it's enough. I think it's a mistake getting rid of players like Chalaba, um, Ake in defence. Those are players that could have easily got into the 18 and potentially played a lot of games this season. Uh, and then when you keep Chalaba, you probably don't need to buy Danny Drinkwater for 35 million. I, I've got nothing against Danny Drinkwater, I just think he's a bog standard player and yes they brought him for depth which they need so they needed to bring someone in because they got rid of Chalaba, they got rid of Matic, uh, they got rid of Loftus-Cheek on loan so they needed that but I just don't think he's that good so you know Bakayoko and Kante will probably play a lot more so yeah I've got them third which is still a, a solid season to be fair um, and yeah let me know what you think. Next I've got Man City <sighs> to be honest they should be winning the league they should be walking the league um, They've ironed out all of their problems, uh, mainly in fullback. Obviously, they brought three different fullbacks. They brought other players in as well, like Bernardo Silva, having him on top of David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, uh, Yaya Toure, Aguero, Gabriel Jesus. 
you know they've just got phenomenal players yes I think at centre back there's still an issue uh, John Stones he's a decent player Otamendi decent but sometimes they make mistakes Vincent Company is he going to get injured again Edison it's too early to say he's another Bravo he does look better than Bravo and to be honest that's not hard but is, is he going to be an another keeper that takes a while to adjust um, he's made some errors already but he's made some great saves so it's hard to judge with Edison and it's early in the day uh, early days but if he does become kind of like another Bravo then that's another issue for City and they'll leak goals they'll score a lot they've got a phenomenal team as I say they've probably got the strongest team in the world uh, in the world what the fuck am I going on about sorry in the Premier League um, and they've also by their own fans uh, they say that they've got the best manager in the world so there's really no excuse they should be winning the league but I've got them second uh, and yeah I'm a Man United fan so make of that what you will but yeah uh, I, I think it'd be a good season for them but they definitely need to win some silverware if it's not the Premier League they have to win an FA Cup a League Cup and they have to do well in the Champions League at least the semi-finals anyway now I've got my team Man United first for like the fourth season in a row I've predicted them to finish first but honestly honestly when I've predicted them first I've you know thought oh yeah we, we can do it we can but I've always been about 50 60 percent honestly speaking this season however I am so much more confident not just because of the start we've made we've made a phenomenal buy in Romelu Lukaku and Nemanja Matic two players which fill voids that we've had for a while I know Zlatan Ibrahimovic scored a lot but not since really even Ruud van Nistelrooy, I'd say. Like even when we had Rooney, Berbatov, uh, Tevez, they were phenomenal. But I'd say Ruud van Nistelrooy is the last out and out number nine who only cares about literally putting the ball in the back of the net. Not since then have we had a player like uh, Lukaku, someone who's coming into his prime as well. Uh, and Matic, we we haven't had a Matic since Roy Keane, to be honest. Like you know, someone as effective anyway in that CDM role. So. That's important for us. Lindelof, I believe in him. I think he'll come good. It'll just take time. But Jones has been phenomenal in centre-back, uh, filling in for him at the minute. And to be honest, at the minute, Baye Jones, as long as they're fit, they could be the partnership the entire season. But the likelihood is they are going to pick up injuries. So uh, Lindelof got two assists for Sweden um, in his last game when they won 4-0 internationally. And yeah, I, I genuinely think he's been criticised a bit too much early on. Uh, and I believe in him and it'll be good to see him in the Champions League uh, game against Basel because obviously Jones and Bayer are uh, ineligible for that, they're banned um, and then probably against uh, Burton in the League Cup as well give him some experience, let him get into the team but I think he's another good buy um, yes, we probably needed either a winger or a fullback but I think we can manage um, Fossa Mensa going out on loan Andres Pereira going out on loan a little bit unfortunate but it does show with the kind of teams that they've went to Mourinho does see the talent there and he does want to um, put them into the team it's said that apparently uh, when you know Fossa Mensa comes back next season uh, Mourinho sees him as a long-term successor to Antonio Valencia who's now 32 I think so he's getting on a bit in right back although he's been phenomenal for us um, and then Andros Pereira you can definitely see him slotting into that midfield playing some games next season uh, but yeah we sent them out on loan for now so the thing that could scupper us is injuries we do have a, a very deep squad but I would say it's not full of talent in the wings I'd say Martial, Rashford, Mkhitaryan, Mata phenomenal um, but uh, Lingard you know he's two goals one assist or whatever it was two assists one goal last season he's not great he's good as a squad player but hopefully that's all he stays as he doesn't play too much nothing against him you know Manchester born and bred and everything fantastic to have him in the in the squad but yeah obviously you want your better players to be uh, playing we've got Ibrahimovic coming out uh, coming back December January time uh, he's in the Champions League squad as well as is James Wilson uh, obviously James Wilson just taking the piss forgot he even played for United to be honest I didn't I knew he did but you know what I mean like if, been how many years like pff, uh, but yeah uh, I, I doubt you'll get many games unless we get injuries which hopefully we don't if Matic Lukaku can stay fit like they have for their other teams no reason why they can't they don't have an injury track record then yeah I definitely think we'll win the league this season and I'm saying that with 95% 
certainty, which is definitely the highest I've ever had. Um, just the quality of other teams. There's so many teams that can win the league. Um, as for the League Cup and the FA Cup, well, anyone can win them, but I'm going to say uh, we'll win the, the FA Cup again and uh, Liverpool or Man City, one of them. If I, uh, you know what, I'll say Liverpool to win the League Cup, uh, their first trophy in since they won the League Cup back in uh, 2007, was it? 2008? No, it was probably a lot sooner than that, wasn't it? But uh, anyway, yeah, and then the Champions League, I mean, whoever beats Real Madrid will probably win the thing. But uh, you know what, I'm going to say PSG. With the players that they've bought, uh, Mbappe, Neymar, etc., on top of the team they have, they have to challenge. They've spent £350 million. Yeah, they haven't paid for Mbappe yet, but that 166 million next year, they have to challenge for the Champions League. So you know what? I'm going to stick my neck out and say uh, PSG. The logical team is Real Madrid, of course. Um, and as for England teams, English teams in the Champions League, I reckon Liverpool will get to the last 16. I reckon Chelsea will get to the quarterfinals and the Manchester clubs semi-finals probably lose against Real Madrid and PSG. But uh, you never know. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, you've enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, subscribe god damn it I can't do my intro like the video subscribe if you haven't already like the, oh my days I fucked it up again you know what just enjoy the video hopefully and uh, yeah I'm just gonna end it I can't even do my outro for fuck's sake <laughs>